Welcome back to the Lights Out Podcast. Bedtime stories for boys and girls for when the lights go out. Good evening, boys and girls. Are you ready for bed? Are you all tucked up and ready for another Lights Out bedtime story? Well, you're in for an extra treat tonight because tonight I'm reading from outside, in the dark, in a forest, as you can hear, next to a road. Now tonight's story is called The Story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf. I'm sure you've seen the animation, so let's read the book. Are you ready? Once upon a time, in Spain, there was a little boy, and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little balls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to sit just quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favourite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favourite tree and he would sit in his shade all day and smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the others, little balls, and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here, where I can just sit quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome, and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was a very big and strong. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked just to sit quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. All of the other bulls run around, snorting and butting and leaping and jumping, so the men would think that they were the very, very strong and fierce ones and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him, and he didn't care, so he went out to his favourite cork tree and sat down. He didn't look where he was sitting and instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade he sat on a bumblebee. Well, if you were a bumblebee and the bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him, right? And that's just what this bee did to Ferdinand. Wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up and with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. He was the largest and fiercest bull of them all, just the one for the bullfight in Madrid. Uh Uh-oh. So they took him away for the bullfight that day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing and all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. They had a parade into the ball ring. First came the bandelarios with long sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the ball and make him mad. Next came the picadores who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the ball and make him madder. Then came the matador, the proudest of them all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword, and he was supposed to stick it in the bull last of all. Then came the bull, and you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce, and all the banderillos were afraid of him, and the picadores were afraid of him, and the matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran into the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped 
because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers in all the lovely lady's hair, and he just sat down quietly and smelled. He wouldn't fight. He wouldn't be fierce, no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled, and the bandoleros were mad, and the picadors were madder, and the matador was so mad, he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he's sitting there still under his favourite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. The end. Wow. That was a great story for day 30 of Awesome Author August. Coming to you from the Lights Out podcast, Bedtime Stories. For little angels, miracles and heroes like you. Good night.